Good morning guys, I'm Nate Savage with muzzleloaders.com and today we're going to be talking about five things that will make you more accurate with your muzzle loader. So the first thing we want to talk about today is finger and thumb placement. It's a crucial part of your accuracy that a lot of people don't think about. I'm just going to demonstrate on this rifle right here. What I like to do is a lot of people will grip the rifle like a pistol and that can cause a lot of negative input on the back depending on how you twist your wrist on that rifle. What I like to do is put my thumb right on this flat spot on the top and get a good weld to the rifle and that allows me to not put a lot more input into the rifle as I'm pulling the trigger. And as far as finger placement goes, I like to make sure that I'm not curling over on that trigger. That gives you a negative feel and can also put a negative input into the rifle. So with my thumb on the top here welded to the stock and my finger, I like to use the pad of my finger to get a good feel on the front of that trigger shoe and as you're pulling, you can kind of pull almost to your thumb and the pad of your finger and get a really good trigger feel and that'll help you break the trigger good and clean. The next thing we want to talk about today is cheek weld and side alignment. So on a rifle like this one here, you can see that we have an adjustable cheek piece or comb. On an adjustable cheek piece, it gives you the ability to really customize this rifle to your side alignment and your cheek weld individually, which is very nice, which is a very nice feature. And so what you want to do is you'll loosen this screw and kind of get it where you think that you need it. Tighten it down, put your cheek on it, close your eyes first, kind of get it to where you normally feel natural and open your one eye. Now, obviously for that, I was looking right over the top of it. I usually shoot a little bit lower cheek, cheek weld. So on this one, I'd have to adjust my cheek weld, which you don't want to have to do. That's why this is here. But you just want to make sure that when you're in the scope and you open your eyes, you have a clear side alignment. That means there's no black around the edges of the scope whatsoever. You have a clear picture of that and your reticle is dead center and there's no black around the edge. I want to overstress that on the black around the edge because you don't want, if you're off on that whatsoever, that's actually moving the, your sight picture on target to where you will shoot left or right depending on how you're inputting your face on the rifle. Again, once you get that set, really practice that to where you have a set spot on your face that you know that that is going to be every single time. So for me on a lower one, I know it's gonna be my jawbone, or a higher one like this one. So I know I would put it right on my jawbone, open my eye, and I just had a perfectly clear sight picture right there because I have that spot marked for a higher comb. On a non-adjustable, such as this one, it doesn't give you the ability to adjust this. And so really what you have to do is have that spot on your face that you know you're gonna hold every single time. So for me on a non-adjustable like this one, I know it's gonna be that lower jawbone, not my cheekbone. So I will put it up and I will put my jawbone on it and that gives me a clear sight picture right away. And so I know that when I'm pulling this up, I'm putting it on my jawbone. I've got no black shadow in the scope whatsoever. And I have a clear sight picture downrange. The next thing we want to talk to you about today is rest stability. Now there are three main ways that I can think of that people shoot at the range for the most part. It's either going to be off a sandbag, a lead sled, or a bipod. So I would say the lead sled is typically the more common one that we see. And I don't necessarily recommend that method and here's why when you're shooting off of a lead sled the it does not allow the gun to flex and 
it interferes with the harmonics of the rifle differently than when you are on the rifle because it's so firm. That natural input to the rifle is going to affect your accuracy downrange. So if you are going to shoot off of a lead sled, I recommend that you just use that to get your close zero and then shoot off of a bipod with rear support. And when I talk about rear support, what I'm talking about is some sort of rear bag that allows you to really stay stable. Now, obviously when you're hunting, you may or may not carry a bag. I do. I like to have it for stability if I have the time. If I don't have the time, I won't use it. But this really allows you to lock that rifle into that center dot that you're trying to shoot at at 100 yards to zero. So what I will do is I like to use a bipod like this setup here and then also have the rear bag in the back and I can input into that bag with my left hand and I don't need to touch the rifle at all to really get that perfect zero. I do want to talk about the sandbag just a little bit because I feel like it is probably a slightly better option than the lead sled but it still doesn't allow you that stability uh, from what we've found. You can get on it and you can get a relative zero but it really doesn't lock in like the bipod with the rear support where you can just completely lock that center dot onto what you're trying to shoot downrange. The fourth thing is breathing and I don't mean that you just you need to breathe I mean that there is a special cadence that we have found will provide much more accuracy downrange. A lot of people think that holding your breath is the right thing to do and that is definitely not what you want to do. That will change your heart rate, it changes your input into the rifle, and then your follow-through is bad after that. Your natural rhythm of your breathing should be firing that rifle at the exhale. Again, you don't want to breathe in, breathe out, and hold your breath on the bottom either, but you should be able to time that shot to where you're on the crosshair, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, and you have that rhythm to where when you're breathing out, you know that at that bottom of that breath, you can hold it right on that target. And you, you kind of engage your trigger pull at that point, breathe in, breathe out, you're on the X and boom, you pull the trigger. Make sure you hold that trigger back as well. And we'll get into the follow through here in a second, but you want to make sure you're holding that back. I didn't have anything after that. <laughs> the fly landed on me. A lot of times at 100 yards, you won't notice your heartbeat in the scope, in the reticle. But at further distances, which you might not get into with a muzzleloader, depending on if you're shooting a Paramount or an Acura or Nitro Fire or whatever your application is, but you can actually see your heartbeat in the reticle on target if you're really concentrating on it. And so you want to make sure that, that you do have that natural breathing rhythm to not change your heart rate as well. So if you're holding your breath, you'll typically notice it, your heart rate is going to increase a little bit after you let out that breath. So remember to keep that natural cadence. Okay, the last thing we want to talk to you about today is follow through. One thing that people probably don't think about is between that split second of when you pull that trigger and that bullet is flying down the end of that barrel, any kind of movement at that point is gonna change your point of impact. So you really wanna have a solid follow through. And that really starts with when you pull the trigger. I've seen a lot of people pull the trigger and, and like let go like they're afraid of it. You really wanna make sure you have that trigger, you're timing it right, your breathing is good, and when you pull that trigger, you're really holding it and still looking through the scope after you've pulled the trigger. Another thing we see people do, especially with muzzle loaders, because there's a bunch of smoke, they want to see that shot. And you're not going to necessarily see that shot any better by jumping off the rifle as you are by just looking through the scope and waiting for the smoke to clear. Depending on if you've got a crosswind or whatnot, it might even be pretty quick that that, that, that smoke dissipates. So really get on that rifle hold that trigger back and just keep looking through your scope 
until you can see your target again. That seems like a long time, but any kind of input into that rifle as that bullet's traveling down the barrel, again, is gonna shift your point of impact and that is not what you want for muzzleloader accuracy. Guys, I know that muzzleloader supplies are hard to find these days and a little more expensive than we're used to. So a great way to practice this is just head to the range. You don't need to bring any bullets or powder or anything like that. Just make a dedicated range day, head out, do some dry fire practice. You can get on that rifle just like you're gonna shoot it normally. And this allows you to not have to worry about the input from the rifle after you fired. You can just really focus on those fundamentals and those small things that you're doing. Your trigger pull, making sure you're not flinching after the shot, making sure you don't have any eye shadow, make sure your cheek weld is perfect. You can get out there, get on the rifle with your eyes closed, open your eye, make sure that you, you just get those in those habits that just become natural when you're out in the field and you've got that hunt of a lifetime that you really want to execute on. Well guys, that's about all I've got for you today. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. We'd be happy to answer them for you and we'll see you in the next one.